nine. We have ignition sequence start. Engines on five. Four. And here's how hell would be unleashed. The massive concrete cover of the silo slides open. Lift off. Liquid fuels pumped to the missile's engines ignite, pushing it out of its 150 foot deep silo. 25 to 30 minutes. From that point, your primary target is essentially going to cease to exist. The missile roars into the sky, then into space, streaking out of Arizona over the Arctic Circle, heading for a target somewhere inside the Soviet Union. Then finally, the booster breaks away, and the missile's nine megaton warhead hurtles down to deliver a blast that will wipe out an entire city. The Titan II was good for wide area soft targets where you have multiple political, military, socially important targets grouped together in a single area. Yvonne Morris is now the director of the Titan II Missile Museum. It's in Salrita, about 25 miles south of Tucson, just off Interstate 19. As a missile combat crew commander, I was responsible for supervising a crew comprised of four people. Back then, during the Cold War, Morris was here, deep underground in charge of a crew tasked with launching this Titan II missile. So, if nobody was in the missile flying it, why did it need a crew? Partly, perhaps, one last human failsafe to prevent an accidental launch. Wherever you have access to nuclear weapons, they don't want one person alone with that kind of access. So everything of launch critical importance on the site had to be accomplished by at least two people. Nobody had their finger on the button to launch the missile. That actually came down to turning these keys. The combat crew commander and the deputy combat crew commander would copy and review the launch order. It took both officers to open the safe to access the launch keys and the verification codes. They had to each turn their keys within two seconds of each other and hold them in the on position for five seconds to actually initiate the launch sequence. Another reason for more than one person to do the job, to prevent mishaps like this in the flight of the missile. Being a crew member meant giving the Air Force a pretty deep look inside your head. Everyone that is selected for crew duty has to go through a very significant psychological screening. We were all monitored under something called the Personnel Reliability Program, or PRP. And it worked. It was the epitome of Big Brother. There's now no fuel in the missile. That square cut in the tip is so the whole world can see there is no longer a bomb inside. That is also why the missile silo is left partly opened on clear view for any country's spy satellites. For Yvonne and other former crew members, one question lingers. If the order had come, would they have launched the missile? I don't have any doubt that I would have turned the key. And my confidence in that comes mostly from the fact that the Titan II is a retaliatory system. The government shut down the Titan II missile program back in the early 1980s. There were 18 missile silos in Arizona. This one is a museum. Some of the 17 others are now in private hands and not completely without their dangers. Watch what happens as this guy works to turn his missile silo into a home. Pretty good scare, but nobody got hurt. <laughs>